In this video, we're going to start to build up the actual structure of our operating system from the boot process. And what I mean by that is that in most traditional operating systems, you really have two sections of the actual operating system. We have a bootloader and then we have a kernel. So these are two separate components. What the bootloader is going to do for us is it's going to really set up the system into an expected state. It's going to gather some information about the system and it's going to place everything where it needs to be. Then the bootloader is going to load the kernel into memory and the kernel is going to do all of the actual operating system stuff. So like managing the resources, handling system calls, all of that good stuff. In order to create a system with this structure, we really need to be able to load many things off of our boot disk. So our boot disk in this situation right now is a floppy disk. With this floppy disk in every sector of the floppy disk, we have about 512 bytes to work with. We can't fit a bootloader and kernel in the 512 bytes. We're going to have to use multiple sectors of the disk. In order to be able to do that, we need to do two things. We need to format our disk using some sort of file format that is easily understandable, accessible, and usable on our system. And then the other thing that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to actually interact with the file system to load data from the disk. And that's what we're going to be taking on in this video and a few other videos from now as well. So to start off with, I've divided up my system so that I have my bootloader in its own folder and my kernel in its own folder. The reason why I've done this is because it's just easier to work with these files separate from each other and it helps to organize our code. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify our make file to accommodate for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two different uh, rules, one for the bootloader and one for the kernel. So I'm just going to add in some comments here because it makes it a little bit easier to read. So we're going to have our kernel, and what our kernel is going to do is it's going to produce a file for us. That file is going to be in the build directory, and it's going to be named kernel.bin. And generally, the way that this is going to work is we're going to do this sort of process. So we're going to say builder slash kernel.bin, and what we're going to do is we're going to run our assembler, in this case NASM. We're going to run it against the following location, sourcester slash kernel slash main.asm is the name of the file that I've placed here. And its format is going to be a bin file, and the output is going to be towards that build underscore dir slash kernel dot bin. So that's what this is going to produce. Now, when I'm talking about these two different files, these are both the same file right now. So the boot.asm was what we created in our previous video and main.asm is just a copy of it. So we haven't actually done anything with that code. We're just uh, creating copies of them to create a better structure inside of our make file. So that's the kernel. Now the bootloader is going to be very similar. So bootloader, we have a rule for it. So we have a bootloader here. We're going to do a bootloader like this. It's going to create a file called bootloader.bin. And generally, it's going to do the same sort of idea. So this is just going to be bootloader.bin. This is going to be sourcester slash bootloader slash boot.asm. And it's going to go into this bootloader.bin file here. So all of that is all good. That's all nice and simple. Now we can turn our attention towards our floppy disk image. Now our floppy disk image is going to be rather interesting because we're going to modify this now to actually use a file format. And that file format is going to be FAT12. FAT stands for file allocation table. FAT12 is a really simple iteration of that file format, which we're going to be able to implement pretty easily into our current code. And then as we continue to develop our operating system, we can start to integrate different uh, file types and file structures as we continue on to get things that are more modern in design. But just to help us with learning the process, we'll start off with FAT12. So I'm going to create what we would call a floppy image, since we're really working with like this floppy disk image format, since it's a simple one to work with. We're going to build that main.img. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so we have this builder slash main.img, and it relies on the bootloader and the kernel. So those are the two things that we need before we start this process. The way that we're going to start this process is we're first going to create our image file. We're going to do that using the dd command, which is going to allow us to copy some data from an input file to an output file. So the input file is going to be dev0. The output file is going to be builder slash main.img. The bs will be 512, and the count is going to be 2880. 
So what this is going to do is this is going to copy data from dev0 into a file called main.image. Dev slash zero basically will just output some null data, so a whole bunch of zeros, and it's going to output them in a particular format. That's going to be creating blocks of 512 bytes, so that's the block size. And then the count is 2880, so it's going to repeat that 2880 times, which is going to give us that 1.33 megabyte floppy disk size. So it's going to create basically a disk image that is the proper size for us, all initialized to zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that file and we're going to format it using makefs or mkfs.fat hyphen f12. We're using fat12, so that's why hyphen f is 12. We need to give it some sort of label name, and typically the label name would be all in capital letters. Uh, in my example, I've named my OS Jazz OS, just as a name for it. You can put any name in here, as long as it's in all capitals, that's all you really need. And we're going to specify where we're formatting. So we're formatting the builder slash main.img. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy our bootloader and kernel onto this image. So I'm going to do a DD, and I'm going to copy the builder slash bootloader dot bin. And I'm going to copy this into the location of builder slash main dot img. I'm going to set this no trunk option, which will make sure that it doesn't truncate the file since it's smaller than the full disk size. So just make sure that it doesn't truncate the rest of it. Now to get the second part onto the file, we're going to use mcopy. This will allow us to copy more data onto the disk after this initial move so that we can you know, ensure that we're not doing things like overwriting our bootloader or changing the format at all. What we do for this is we provide to it the location that we're going to copy. So that's going to be my main.img. And then what I'm copying over is I'm copying over this kernel.bin. And the way that I'm going to copy it over, I'm typically going to give it like some sort of like label to it. So we'll just give it a name like kernel.bin. And this is how we actually set up our image so that it's using a file format, in this case, FAT12. Now, what's interesting about this is when we run this code here to make this actual uh, program here, you'll see that in general, oh, it's saying that I don't have a rule for kernel. Let's just, uh, it's probably just, um, oh, I've spelt it wrong here. Kernel, like that. And then we can run this again. And what you'll see here generally is that we get this interesting sort of error. This error here is saying that it cannot initialize the kernel. It's a bad target. The reason why we're getting this error right now is actually because of the way that FAT12 generally works. FAT12 is going to expect a header on the actual disk itself. That header is going to provide information about the actual format of the disk. Without that information, we're actually going to get a failure when we try to load this data. So how do we get the header onto the disk? Well, the answer to that is that we actually place it in our boot.asm file at the very top. So we define some constant values that are going to be the header of the disk itself. So let's walk through what that header looks like. The first thing that we typically put on the header is actually a jump to the start of our bootloader code, followed by a no-op. So this is a jump. A short jump generally means that we're jumping to something inside of this file. So that would be this main, which is inside of the file itself. And the no-op is just there as like a blank operation. It's just generally there as convention. Uh, I think generally just to add a little bit of space between the header and the jump itself. This just makes sure that when we actually run this code, it jumps over the header into the code itself. That way it doesn't end up executing the header, which would you know, obviously not work because it's just data. Now we have a few different things that we need to define inside of the header. So the first thing is gonna be the OEM, which generally I think could be set to pretty much any value, but usually for compatibility, we set it to MSWIN 4.1. Now each of these has a defined size for them. So you'll see that when we're defining things, we make sure that they fit inside of the expected size. And that's gonna come through with our defined bytes as well as the values that we're picking. So MSWIN 4.1 is a very common value here. If you wanna actually see these header files, you can actually create a FAT12 disk image and you can take a look at it inside of your, uh, like a hex editor or something like that. And you can actually see these headers in more detail. The next part of the header is going to define how many bytes there are per sector on our disk. 
For our floppy disk, we have 512 bytes per sector. That's what we've been working with generally for our bootloader. So that's what we'll use here. And then we're generally going to define the number of sectors per cluster. And generally, we would use a value of one for this. And then similarly for reserved sectors, any sectors that are actually reserved, we generally are going to define this as a value of one as well. So we'd have one for that. Now we would generally give what's called a fat count. So how many file allocation tables there are on the disk. For this particular disk format, for our floppy disk, we would use two as our value here. And then we give a value for the dir entries count. This value here is going to be a word that's set to 0E0H. So generally what this value here is going to be representing is it represents the number of directory entries that are on the disk. So this is just mostly a standard value that we would see on most disks when we set this uh, particular header. Now we would need to set up our total sectors. So the total number of sectors that we would have on the actual disk itself. And this we got from the times operation that we saw inside of our make file. So it was the one that was corresponding with uh, when we look at our disk image here, the count here, 2880. So this value matches generally with this value here. That's the total number of sectors. It's generally going to be how many of these 512 sectors do we have? 2880 is the answer. So next up, we have our media descriptor type. This is set to a very particular value for our floppy disk. It's 0F0H, so that's the value that we would set here. We're going to have generally our sectors per file allocation table. That value would typically be set to 9 for this type of disk. We have the sectors per track, which is going to be set to generally 18. We have the number of heads that are associated with this disk. So the number of heads associated with this disk is going to be a DW that is equal to two. I just realized that I have missed the colons for these. So we wanna make sure that we just go back and put those in. There we go, just like this. Let's make sure that all these colons are generally present here, 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 and here. Okay, great. So now the last things that we have here in this header section for the BDP portions is going to be the hidden sectors. So the hidden sectors in this case is set to zero. It's the number of hidden sectors that we would have on our disk. And the large sector count is also going to be set to zero. Okay, now moving on from this, we wanna give a little bit of information about the disk itself. We typically call these the EBR portion of the header. So typically there will be a drive number associated with this. And I think usually by default, we're just gonna set that to zero. We have then a reserved byte that just is set to zero. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just some reserved data, just adds space. We have an EBR signature. So we have a signature value. And I think generally this could be set to 29H as a typical value. I think it could either be 28 or 29. I think generally we would use 29 for this particular disk type. We then provide a volume ID. And generally you could use pretty much any sort of value. I think the one that I typically see when I use the hex editor on this computer is something that looks like this. You could copy these values and they'll work fine for your particular use case as well. And then what we have is we have two more fields, so we're almost at our end here. We have a volume label. Now the volume label we have to be a little bit careful with. It's defined as a DB, and it's gonna be the label of the actual disk itself. Now the trick with this is that it has to be 11 bytes in size. So because of this, we have to make sure that we specify exactly 11 characters. If you don't have 11 characters in your label, you do have to put spaces to pad it in size to make sure that it's 11 characters. So for instance, if I want to use that same uh, value like a jazz OS, like this, what I would do is since this is five, six, seven, I would add spaces eight, nine, 10, 11, until it's 11 in size. So we just add spaces until we reach 11. And that's the same sort of idea with the system ID. 
this one is going to be the file format. So in this case, FAT12. And we have to add spaces until we get to the size of eight. So this one is five, six, seven, eight, just like that. And with that, we have all of our disk headers now available. Now, if you want to learn more about these disk headers, you can look at the official documentation to understand more about how these headers are actually defined and the actual values for them. For now, we're going to work with these particular values and we're going to go ahead and take a look and see if we have things working. Just going to fix up these so that they're all consistent. Just add a hyphen instead of an underscore. With this all set now, we should see everything working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just clear out my build directory just so that there's no old artifacts. And we're just going to try to make again. And you see that when I make now, I don't get any sort of errors. Everything actually works successfully because everything is formatted the way it's expected for a FAT file system. With this, we now have a disk image that is formatted properly with that FAT formatting. So now we're going to be able to access data off of this disk in a more consistent fashion. We're going to be able to use some of these ideas like cylinder head sector based uh, accessing of disks to be able to access data. And using that, we'll be able to do things like loading the kernel off of the disk to be able to run it on our system. So right now we've got everything formatted the way that we need it. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can actually access the data that's on that disk. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.